Greetings learners and welcome to the climate and weather lesson for today. We are going to be focusing on traveling disturbances. Remember that we have got number one, bag winds under traveling disturbances. Number two, coastal low pressures also under traveling disturbances. And for today's topic, we are going to be looking at the third one, that is line thunderstorms. Very important topic. Please pay attention. Let's see how it goes. Here, what you must note first is the topic itself, line thunderstorms. By definition, these are severe weathers, particularly thunders and lightning, along a line over the interior of South Africa. Note that these will be over areas of instability. Now, we're going to work on this using a diagrammatic presentation. Now, let us start on the bottom right side. Now, let's see. There's the South Indian high pressure. And you can see already Indian high pressure cell, a high pressure anticyclonic in the southern hemisphere. So those arrows already are moving anticlockwise, which is anticyclonic. Okay. Now, over the Indian Ocean, there is the warm Mozambique current. Now, this ocean current has got warm, moist air over it. So as the South Indian high pressure cell blows over this ocean current, it picks up the warm, moist air. Okay, let's see how it goes. There's the warm, moist air being blown inland. Now, the most important thing here is that I'm talking about the temperature of the air, it is warm. And I'm also referring to the moisture content of the air. Two things that are very, very important. The temperature of the air and the moisture content of the air. Again, where you start is also important. Please mention the high pressure by name and explain how it circulates. So in this scenario, we end up with the eastern side of South Africa being dominated by warm, moist air. Let us now move to the left-hand side of your drawing, essentially the western side of South Africa. There's a high pressure cell there. You can see it. There's a high pressure cell there. And that is the South Atlantic high pressure cell. It is a high pressure cell over the Atlantic Ocean. Remember, dear candidates, that if you just say Atlantic or you say Indian, you will not be able to score marks. You must say South Atlantic, South Indian. That South describes the actual location of the high pressure cell. Again, let's go back. High pressure, anticyclonic in the southern hemisphere, meaning a high pressure will have an anticlockwise circulation. Let's see. Okay? What you are noticing already, that yes, there is an anticlockwise circulation, but there's a different color now. Over the South Indian high pressure, the color was red. But now over the South Atlantic high pressure, the color is blue. Always be on the lookout for this change of color. Because the red color often signifies an air mass that is warmer in temperature. And the blue color often signifies an air mass that is colder in temperature. Now, this anticyclonic, secu uh, uh, anticyclonic circulation is over a cold ocean current. And which ocean current is that? That is the cold Benguela current, which goes up the west coast of South Africa. Now, over the cold Benguela current, there is cold air. And this cold air comes up because the waters over that ocean are actually very, very cold because they come up from the polar region. Now, this cold air, I'm referring to temperature. Let me now refer to the moisture content. It is cold air and it is dry air, okay? There it is, meaning that cold dry air will be dominating the western side of South Africa. That cold dry air will be dominating the western side of South Africa. 
Now, let's look at something. Back to basics. When you started your climate and weather studies, it was said that where do two different air masses meet? That is called a front. So here we find there is cold air and warm air meeting somewhere at the center. That is definitely a front. But in this instance, we have a special name for it. It is called a moisture front. So in the exam, if you just call that a front, it will not be good enough. We are looking for a specific term, moisture front. So please make sure you pick on that, because geography is a science. You can't speak to it in general terminology. Okay? Along this front, what will happen then? Remember, it will be a zone on, of instability because cold air and warm air cannot mix. So there'll be atmospheric instability there, meaning the cold air being the heavy and more aggressive air because it's got higher molecular density. It will wedge itself under the warm air that is on the east and lift it, meaning there'll be heavy cloud cover. Heavy cloud cover is always cumulonimbus clouds. And heavy precipitation, resulting in thunderstorms and lightning. That is what happens along a moisture front. Let's take another dimension to this. There might be a question in the exam that says, what happens to this front in terms of mobility? in terms of movement. That moisture front, straddling across the whole country, even as far flung as Botswana and parts of Namibia, can only move from its current position to the east. The reason is that, the reason is that, remember cold air has got a higher molecular density, it is heavier, it is more aggressive and warm air can only be lifted. It does not have weight, and it only rises. So that cold air, cold, dry air, will only be pushing the front towards the east. Another popular question is on which side will the rainfall, thunderstorms, and lightning be in terms of looking at the front? Always the answer should be on the east end side. Reason being, warm air is on the east and it is forced to rise. And when it rises, it leads to condensation and ultimately precipitation. The heavier the cloud cover, the heavier the precipitation. In this case, add another factor. There'll be thunderstorms and lightning. Let us move on. This is an example of a question from a question paper. Let us go through it a little bit just to make sure that we are conversant. Figure 2.4 shows a moisture front across South Africa. 2, 4, 1. What is a moisture front? Remember, it is where the two different air masses, meaning you are going now to be talking about cold, dry air from the west, and warm, moist air from the east meet. And this is a zone of instability where you often get thunderstorms and lightning, okay? 2.4.2, distinguish between the moisture contents. Now, there's the key word, moisture contents of winds A and B. Now, how you answer this question is important. Not really about the content of the answer that I want to talk about. First, you must say A, and then talk about A, and then B, then talk about B. So A, remember, is originating over the warm Mozambique Channel. So it is a warm and moist area. So in terms of the moisture content, A will be moist. And B originates from an area that is dominated by the cold Bengala current. It is cold and dry. Now, therefore, the moisture content of B will be, it is a dry wind. Now, let us look at 243. Name the type of thunderstorm that occurs along the moisture front. Again, the giveaway is there. 
front. So that is a frontal thunderstorm, okay? But always make sure you don't use the symbol. You use full words, frontal thunderstorm, okay? 244, on which side of the moisture front do the storms form? We have tackled that one. Remember, this side has got warm, moist air, so it will be on the eastern side of the front that you will get the thunderstorm. Again, 245 is covered because you are explaining your answer above. How do you explain it? Just to make sure we touch the right buttons so that we get the right marks. Remember, on the western side, you've got your cold, dry air, which is heavier, has got a higher molecular density, more aggressive, and moves fast. Okay? It lifts the warm, moist air that is on the east. And it goes up, it rises. The correct geographical term, there is convectional rising. So that will lead to condensation and ultimately precipitation, thunderstorms, and lightning on the east. I want us to pay particular attention to that one because you are now candidates for grade 12. You have to demonstrate that you can apply information, okay? This question looks at the impact of these lightning thunderstorms, but it is particular on farmers, meaning we are referring to the farming community. Now, the moment you are looking at hazards, which is dangers, it means you must look at the negative impact. So there's nothing that you're going to say here that is nice and rosy, that is milk and honey. You are looking at all the bad things that the line thunderstorm will be leading to. So let's see how you structure your answer. I'm not going to be focusing on the content of the answer per se, but the structure of the answer, okay? Now, here you are going to be looking at, number one, rainfall. Remember, thunderstorms will have rainfall and thunderstorms will have lightning as well. Now, mention and qualify that rainfall. It must be heavy rainfall. You are not going to get marks by saying rainfall. It must be heavy rainfall. Then, here is the key word, leads to, okay? You have to say leads to because you have to emphasize the impact. Heavy rainfall on itself is not a big problem. But heavy rainfall leads to flooding. Then you can start talking about the impact of flooding on topsoil, on removing the topsoil, on the quality of the soil. Because when topsoil is removed, it means the quality of the soil is degraded. It impacts directly on the farmers. Okay? Now let's talk about those floods removing vegetation. In this case, particular references made to crops that have already been planted, damage to crops, removal of crops, and flooding of the fields that were planted. Okay? Now let's move again and talk about lightning. What can lightning do? Lightning can strike the animals that are in the farming precinct of the farmer, be it in the felt grazing fields or in the yard itself. And also, this lightning can affect the farmers by igniting fires in the wild, leading to what is commonly known as felt fires. But we also accept field fires in the exams. Okay? This lightning can also burn down the equipment that the farmers use. So you see you have got more than you need, especially for the four marks that are needed there. But be on the lookout, because that question can also be around the paragraph setting, where we say, in a paragraph of approximately eight lines, discuss the hazards or dangers associated with line thunderstorms to farmers. Okay? So I hope you are now comfortable, and thank you for listening. And dear candidates, as you know, this is a very crucial time for your future. Please study hard.